Hey, hey, Matthew here. So this is just a little goofy experiment um, that is based off of some ideas that we were kicking around uh, when Zoe and I were down in Mexico. So the, the concept, the like hope, is that you'd be able to take something from one machine um, and synchronize that with another cluster of machines. So for example, uh, VVVV has a feature called boy grouping that lets you essentially say like all of these things uh, need to be synchronized across the network and then VVV uh, does a bunch of the hand holding for you so that you don't have to do that. Um, so what we're going to look at is, is some initial kinds of experiments with that idea. Um, so here we can see uh, that we've got a, a few base pieces here, the layout that you see on my screen um, and I'm going to go ahead and just uh, reload this piece so that I'm synchronized. Um, as you see uh, on the left hand side, top and bottom, uh, this is a um, server process, right? This is the controller essentially. Over here in the upper right hand side we see a local uh, copy that's running. So both this one over here and this one on the left are both running on the same machine. And then we have a piece down here in the lower right. Now this is running uh, on another machine here on my home network. So uh, two processes running locally, one process running on another machine. And what we want, or what I would love, is for the ability to say, um, s keep some pieces in sync so I could like move around my camera, um, or rotate um, you know, any number of pieces in the scene, change the light color. Essentially, I want to be able to change any parameter um, and have that synchronized not only locally to other processes, processes, but also on the network. The idea being that you would have some number of machines that are running, uh, and rather than having to compose everything in one, save that file, distribute it to the rest of the machines, or restart the project, that you could simplify some of that process. So here what we can see is that um, there's a little bit of Python goodness running under the hood uh, to make all this work. And the, the trick is that there are a couple pieces that, are, that show up here for us. So the first being this tag. This sync pars tag is the, um, the flag, essentially, that indicates that I want this operator's um, parameters to be synced across the network. So we can see if in this geo, for example, if I turn off the sync pars uh, tag or delete it, I can do things like translate it around uh, or maybe spin it. and those changes are only reflected locally. They don't actually show up anywhere across the network. Now, if I was to instead go ahead and add this tag here, I should now see that uh, if I change anything on this operator, I now take all of the parameters on this operator, put them in a big dictionary, and then ship them off to both my local process and my remote process to make sure that I keep them in sync. So that means then I can start to think about composition in a way that doesn't require um, that I save this, sync it, and do a bunch of other stuff. We can also see that inside here, I'm going to go ahead on this torus, I'm going to turn on my sync pars uh, flag, or add that tag rather. And we should now see that I can do things like change the radius. Um, and I've now turned on the fact that I want this operator state to be uh, synchronized across the network. Now, the place where this doesn't work right now is it doesn't work with changes in the position of operators. So if I move you know, my um, tops around in my network, uh, that's not reflected. And if I added more operators in line, um, for example, let's say I want to do something like insert a blur. Um, this isn't reflected either. So now I've got this kind of like interesting scenario. One by two, there we go. Uh, 1.77. Um, and 
Now I've got this situation where what I probably really want, you know, some of the magic that I really want to have happen is I want to be able to do this kind of work and have it show up um, all across the network. I want that to propagate. What we can do, and uh, there is like a nice little trick that works well for uh, local copies. So we'll see here that between um, the two processes that are running locally, if I update this tox and then bounce up a level, I do have this button called reload remote tox. And what that does is it's going to find this matching component over here in my other local network and it's going to re-init this. So there we can see that it reloaded it. So it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be too much more um, fussing to say add another step to this that before I, when I hit this button reload remote talks, that if I have a machine that is not locally, not, or if I have a uh, touch designer process that's running on a non-local machine, that I both copy over the contents of this tox and then pulse reload it. That would be the, the best case scenario there. Because we can see that actually what it's done is it's just reloaded this and it hasn't actually copied it over. So right, the, the way that looks is that I've got, uh, here's my, oh no, Clio, come back to me. Clio's got my remote process and I can track down my grouping and I happen to have this folder called scenes um, and over here let's track it down as well oops nope not there uh, this is in tools mm -mm -mm. so we could see over here I might go to my scenes and I might grab my I think that's scene one that I changed. And I might drag that over, replace it in a destination. Now we should go be able to come back here and see that if I reload it, that sure enough it catches up. That part's a little bit, little bit fussier, and there are a bunch of ways that you could start to think about that. Um, but that's, I'm, I've only kind of experimented with this idea for a day, um, so we're not too far along there. Uh, the other additional pieces of this that are interesting is that we only ever sync our operators that have that sync pars uh, tag added, which means that you could, like, right, one, one way to think about this that's also interesting is that you have an opportunity to do a bunch of experimenting locally before you force that to sync across the network. Um, and that means that you know you can dial things locally before you you smoosh them across the network. And depending on what you're up to, that may or may not be valuable. This isn't what I should say. What this isn't is it's not a good substitute for maintaining state between operators. So I wouldn't necessarily think about this in a um, in a show condition where I wanted really tight synchronization. But from a composition standpoint, this is a really helpful. Um, and, and rather advantageous kind of idea because there are lots of times, especially when you're working in big installations or on big clusters of machines, um, that just this process requires a whole host of steps in order to make it work correctly. So, for example, in some installations, this might look like make a change here locally, uh, shut down the processes that are on the, ro on the remote machines, copy the contents, uh, copy all the changes over to those machines, restart the network over on the other side, check to see if those changes actually took, uh, and then rinse, repeat. And really it would be much nicer to be able to kind of fastly improvise and see those elements show up, especially when you're dealing with a cluster of machines that you need to uh, maintain the state, have the state uh, synchronized between the two of them, especially during the kind of composition experimentation phases. Um, under the hood, what's happening this sync pars, uh, there's some kind of trickery here that's helping me figure out which one of the operators I'm clicking on is the one that's selected, and then extracting all the parameters from it, packaging it up into a JSON dictionary, shipping it across the network, and then on the other side, uh, taking that 
uh, deconstructing it and applying it to the target um, operator. The other thing that this assumes is that this uh, really assumes that the structure of your network is mirrored across. Um, so I've really started with this base project, or uh, with this server project, um, that then I'm running another instance of in both of these places. So this becomes my source of truth that is then synchronized uh, between the places. We can see if we bump up here one more again, there's some other, you know, cool things uh, that happen here, right? I don't, ooh, something went wrong there, huh? Let me just check that out in a minute. Oh, and you didn't reload. Oh, something is wrong there, I tell you what. Hmm, interesting, interesting, very curious. Um, but that is certainly the idea. Let's see if we can figure out what that is real fast. Because that should be test, test. And I wonder if this here, this is over here in remote land modules. Ah, you just didn't get copied. Look, you're nowhere to be found. You need that in order to exist. Okay, so let's get you back down in the corner. We'll home you there. Right, this is, you know, if I could plug for a moment the, um, the benefit of thinking about the fact that um, we have these uh, pieces that are uh, synced over the network, or excuse me, externalized. Ah. This is what it is, is that it's just missing its actual location. Ah, there you are. Um, part of the benefit there is uh, if you've messed something up or you need to make a change, you don't have to move the whole kit and caboodle. Um, you likely only have to move uh, or synchronize the one piece. So we should see that. There we go. That's going to sync up. And if we change this up and then back down, we'll see that syncs up. So there's, you know, there's some interesting pieces here. If I pulse reload it, um, oh, it must be cattywampus to begin with. Um, we should see if we pulse reload, it'll go back to, aha, cool. I thought it would get all weird again, but maybe not. Anyway, so there's some interesting ideas here. I'll share the repo uh, with this. It has a few elements. You'll see this base tool sync pars. Um, this has got the, the two goodies inside of it that are um, calling a bunch of changes. Um, but the real meat and potatoes of what's happening here is handled um, both in this project extension and then here in this general extension uh, over here. Uh, inside communication. So it's really the um, mystery conductor making all of us work. Again, this is a fast experiment that's, you know, uh, a day in tinkering. And so um, my hope is that this inspires some ideas, uh, not only for how other folks are working, but hopefully uh, also for the folks over at Derivative for features that would be really rad to see included. Um, in touch designer kind of out the door as a baked in element. All right, thanks so much and hope you're having a great night. Bye.